we're still on the Independence Day special broadcast. My name is Ekene, and with me in the studio are two special guests, Dr. Deli Shetolu, uh, it's good to have you. Thank you. And also Mr. Ubani, who is also, uh, well, he's a public affairs analyst and a lawyer. It's good to have you with us. My pleasure. Okay, well, before we went on that brief break, we were talking about issues regarding amalgamation of Nigeria, possible uh, dysfunctional foundations, and. Hopefully, we'll be looking at the, the way forward. I just want to take it from there slightly and, and just leave you this thought. I was reading an article recently, and I think maybe even yesterday, a Kerry Delu spokesperson was saying, you know, and I took it that he was saying the glass is half full, where, whereas a lot of us look at it as though the glass is half empty. And this is what he said. He said, many countries would have disintegrated with half of the challenges being faced by our country. Um, so he would say, based on that, that the unity of the country is the greatest achievement of the government. I wouldn't necessarily put it to the government, but I would say that the fact that we're still together is, is something remarkable in itself. Would you agree with that? Well, to 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 lead to extent. Okay. Yes. Why uh, are you so conservative about? Yes, yeah, to, to lead to extent. Uh, there, there are reasons. Okay. Um, we should situate unity within context. You know, uh, I, I rather prefer that the unity of the Nigerian state, you know, is based on equity. And fairness, okay. you know, and uh, and equality. Okay. So the question is: Is the Nigerian Federation as constituted based on equity and fairness and equality? Okay. Okay. Secondly, um, at the component units, at the ethnic nationalities, at the social classes, satisfied or dissatisfied okay. with the power relations and distribution of resources and distribution redistribution of resources within the polity. Would you say they were? You know, they are not. Yes. They're not. They're not satisfied. You know, totally. That's that's been a perception, and it's also a reality. Okay. That several parts of the federation are alienated from the polity. Okay. So you know, the question of alienation is central to power distribution and power politics okay. in any federal or multi you know, multi-ethnic society, okay, thank you. you know, and yeah. that question has not been addressed in Nigeria. So it, it erodes the question of unity mm. in Nigeria. Okay. Fourthly, the political class in Nigeria is primitive and backward wow. and ideologically bankrupt. And we cannot be discussing the question of unity in a society where the ideology is politics of the belly and prebendalism. You know. that, that, that's a heavy punch you just landed there. I, I just want to ask, though, because a lot of people would still bring it back to us, the people who voted this so-called primitive and backward political class in. Are we saying that we couldn't have, even if it meant us participating, putting ourselves forward, have made sure that we had a better crop or a more representative crop of politicians well, governing I, I, us? I, I, have, I, have, I, have my, I have my regrets and I have my doubts about the bourgeois politics Nigeria practices. Okay. The bourgeois politics is decorated politically, and most of the Nigerian people and not inclusive in the political process. But, I've just but if out. you ask me, Sorry, go on. The, the, the politics has constituted, has constructed, it needs more of the people than it, it accommodates and includes. You know, the bourgeois process, in my view, is not likely as constituted, and the political space as constituted is not likely to, to exit Nigeria, you know, from the throes of dependency and underdevelopment and deprivation. You know, we, we need to rethink our politics. We need to rethink the nature of contestation of political power in Nigeria, we need to rethink power politics and distribution of power. These are questions that are central and are germane to the future of Nigeria as a federation, to the future of Nigeria as a polity and a political economy. We're not addressing those questions. Mm -hmm. And the politics and the political process are not addressing those questions, in my opinion. Okay, well, Monday. <laughs> Um, he's saying we need to rethink the way we do politics mm. in Nigeria. And, and maybe you can help us with that. Because, yeah. you know, people are trying to see how do we see this, uh, I don't want to use the word revolution, of our political practice in Nigeria. How will it come about if that is the, where we start in terms of, you know, resuscitating ourselves? Yeah, what, what uh, the, uh, the lecturer is saying is that the way the Nigerian system is working, is working to the advantage of a few set of people, and that's why you know what you read from uh, Akira Dolu's uh, advisor. Mm. You know he was mentioning unity, and according to him, for the fact that we have not been separated means that we are united. Mm. He, he, he may have gotten it wrong. You know, from the look of things, Nigeria is working only for some few, few people, okay. and that's the danger. If you, if you tell them that Nigeria is not united, they will just you know write you off and say you are not saying the right thing. 
We will tell them Nigeria is not working. They tell you that Nigeria is working. You know, a few people who are in government who are benefiting from the system, we tell you that Nigeria is working. Everything is fine, you know. After all, they, they, when they are going, they go with all manner of security apparatus, go with all the latest cars, you know, sometimes 30, 40 cars following a governor, you know, as an entourage. You know, so to them, Nigeria is working. But to majority of Nigerians, Nigeria is not actually working. Okay. And we need to do something about getting the Nigerian consciousness to actually be aroused. Okay. Uh, look at the big, is it uh, the Nigerian program that is going on, you know, uh, they call it uh, BBN. Okay. You know, if you see how many Nigerians are voting, how much money that is being wasted, you know, voting for that particular program, you, 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 will, you will cry for Nigeria. The same set of youth you ask to come and participate in the political process. Okay, Big Brother in Nigeria. Nigeria. Big Brother okay. Nigeria, okay. BBN. They will not. The same thing when you have when you do a program now where musicians will come and sing and dance and they dance naked and all that. You see all the youth will be there. When it is time for election to choose leader, leaders, we are talking about that supposed to run Nigeria. These guys will not participate. These girls will not participate. But they're interested in things that are really for us. May but things that may, has may to do with help, their future. May I just help? Yes. Put, uh, maybe try and identify the, the yes. space these youths yes. you're, you're referring to yes. may be in. Yes. Um, and some may say which came first, the chicken or the yes. egg. Yes. If Peradventure, you're yeah. in a country where you feel your efforts yes. will not yield much. Yes. We see people being made an example yes. of. We see show yes. We see yes. other people who have tried to speak out yes. being silent. Yes. Might you not be saying to yourself, yes. sir, that is it not better for you to eat and sing and just enjoy the little life you can but enjoy? But that is a wrong, as I say, is a wrong posture. Is a wrong procedure. Okay. It's a wrong process because the Americans that we're talking about, the Britain, we're talking about all the other developed nations. You know, it got a stage also in their historical, you know, life like this, where life was not rosy, where things are not moving. But some people say, no, it cannot continue this way. Mm. And they have to now say, no, this is the way for us, because we constitute the majority. The moment you give up and say, oh, the man that is doing it now is in prison and all that, so all of us should go and sleep, then the country will become worse. And then our own children our children will be compromised. So what I'm saying is that that is not how the world works. The world works for those who feel that we cannot sit down and allow this bad system to continue. Okay. So the majority must come together to okay. change the system. Because okay. the people that are misruling us and putting us into this quagmire are less than 10%. Whereas 90, we just give up, you know, easily. That is not the way for us to go. So instead of going to go and enjoy that music, I'm not asking you not to enjoy your music because in develop they enjoy. But before they enjoy, they first of all have put their country in order. Can't we get this country running? Let's get a country that is running for us. Let's get a country that is also running for the future of our children. You know, rather than wasting all that time that the youth are supposed to use their energy in order to get their country fixed, you know, they engage it negatively in things that are supposed not to benefit, you know, us in any way. That is my take in all this. I understand what you are just saying, that with all your vote not counted, you know, why would you want so to go and wait? I say, it's no. what people call apathy. It is for you now to say, no, my vote must count. We did it in 2015. And we must continue to do it even from now onward that our vote must count. When the majority come together, they cannot in any way alter the result when the majority say, no, this is what our result is. So I'm saying that Nigerians must, the, the followership also must reawaken their consciousness. The way we are now, the way we are taking to other things that are negative, that is not in any way building the country, will not help us at all. Don't give up. I'm ensuring and assuring Nigerian you not to give up. We must get a country that is working and the destiny of this country is clearly in our hands. Okay. Dele. Yes. Monday has just been talking about the youth yes. predominantly. Do you share his view? Do you feel that the baton is in their hands? I mean, will they not be right in looking to us if we don't term ourselves youth, that is, and saying, what did you do when it was your turn to run the relay race? Why are you now telling us to go and, you know, maybe you ran the race and you were coming instead of second, you are now fourth, and you're now telling me to overtake third and second to get into first place. You've given me too much of a, uh, do you say, deficit to try and cover, you know, so... Who will begin to take responsibility for where we are now? That's the first question. And then can you tell me what you see as the way forward? Well, the, the political class should take responsibility. But they're not about to. You know, so what do we do? For the deficit. Mm. It, you know, it, it has failed. That's okay. the point. The political class has failed. It, it's, uh, and the state, the Nigerian state is an is amoral state. And ideologically bankrupt, okay. and it's a failing and you know, and, and receding state. So it lacks the capacity. So, so where, where, where we know, are now, it, it lacks the capacity to effectuate differences 
in the socio-economic life of the youth. You know, secondly, you know, the, 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 the governing class lacks a clear-cut ideological base to govern. But, sir, you, know, you in just terms said that they're bankrupt, yes. they, clear, they lack the capacity. Yes. And yet you say they will be the ones to do it. I'm saying, what it, do it, we do yes, practically yes, since yes. they are not capable, in your opinion, it, yes, of, of effecting Yes, we change. need to recreate the states. Okay. We need to recreate the state and we need to transcend the bourgeois politics. If okay. you ask me, most of the political parties have not shown the capacity to offer political and economic alternatives to okay. Nigeria. We need political alternatives, you know, and that would also, by extension, create uh, a new, you know, factions of the political class so, so let, that will produce let's alternatives. Let's take it one step at a time. We need to recreate the states. How yes. do we begin? And who are you referring to? Mr. Obani or, or Monday has looked at the youth. Yes. Who are you looking at when you say we? And, and how do we begin to recreate the state? What do we do? What are our first steps? You're right. Recreating the state could take the form of reform, you know, political reform. Okay. How the question is, that? how do we go about the reform? Thank it, you. It, it could be through constitutional process. Okay. It could be through political restructuring. It, it could be through political, you know, uh, redefinition, you know, of but the state structure. But then you're back again at the mercy of the know? same political it, class it, you, you know? say are yes. bankrupt. Because for you yeah. to do those things, yeah. you still have to engage with no. the political class you have termed as no, no, bankrupt. No, no, But we should bear in mind that the political class is not a monolith. They are fractions of the political class. I'm a member of the political class, okay. in a sense. Good. I'm a member of a political party. Good. My political party don't consider the minor party. But we own a political party. Okay. And we're mobilizing for political change. We're posing political alternatives. Okay. We're posing economic alternatives. Okay. Except that you know, we lack the financial base at this point. To, 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 and we do not intend to monetize the political space. Yes. The point I'm making is you know, the, the fractions of the political class you know, that have been dormant, that have been laid back, should be more aggressive okay. and should contest the space okay. with the dominant political class and begin to ask more and greater questions. You know, the political superstructure as constituted will not take Nigeria far. And I'm insisting that, you know, the dominant faction at, 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 at compromise the polity, at compromise the political economy. Mm -hmm. And that makes it imperative for the other factions, you know, that the other factions should be more organized, should be more cohesive, and should be better focused. Let me situate it within context. Okay. Well, I, I'm, I'm a new Marxian academic. Okay. Okay? And I also belong so to mean, what we call the broad... believe in a socialist yes, kind of... Yes, we belong to the broad left in Nigeria. Okay. We have formed political parties So you're at looking towards things like a welfare we're, state? We're, we're, you know, beyond the welfare state. Okay. We, have, we have formed political parties in, the, you know, in at different points in time. But guess what? Unfortunately, we had differences you know, polemics, on, on strategies, on tactics, on how to proceed and all that. Mm. And to that extent, we've not been able to constitute a cohesive and broad point to confront the bourgeois and predatory class. Okay. That, that's the kind of approach I'm referring to. Okay. So we should all you get know, involved. The bourgeois politics and neoliberal politics, you know, and marketization have failed this country. It has impoverished and alienated the Nigerian people. I'm saying that we should pose alternatives. Okay. The youth you talk about. The youth, it, the, the youth is compromised. Mm. The youth is de-ideologized. Okay. But the question is, who would re-ideologize the okay. youth? Okay. We we'll need the state and the political class to re-ideologize the youth. But this political class is a bankrupt class, and it lacks the capacity, morally and politically, to re-ideologize. And that's the more reason we need to recreate the state, okay. and we need to recreate politics. Wow. The youth can be led. They're willing to be led. They, they wouldn't mind you know, a, a leadership that has the character and that, that, that has the charisma. To show you know, them what Robert Dahl calls charismatic leadership. Okay. They wouldn't mind, but they, they want to see it. They want to see it offered. And demonstrated. I'm sure that they want to see it demonstrated. Okay. okay. You know, and I'm sure the Nigerian youth will be willing to be led. You recall at the point, before the introduction of SAC and before the militarization of the political space. We had student movement that was ideologically correct in Nigeria, okay. that was politically correct and politically focused, and that joined every progressive struggle in Nigeria to redeem Nigeria's political space. At that point, the youth were, were consistent, were politically correct, they were mobilized, they were ideologically coherent. But what happened? At a point, the state you know, intruded into the student movement and bastardized the movement okay. and deliberately, you know, disoriented the movement to serve 
the adv political advantage or the predatory mm. you know, and the backward political class. Okay. So the, the youth, as you know, the youth has the potential. Okay. It all will depend on the state and the political class okay. to offer leadership. This state is not offering the leadership. And, you know, this political class is not offering the leadership. Okay. And that's the more reason I'm conversing for you rethinking offer, of the state. Offer alternatives. You know, and mm. political alternatives within the context of, you know, new political parties. Okay, well, Monday, you've heard the passion with which he's expressing his, his desire for us to move forward. Mm. Uh, do you share his views to begin with? Yeah. <laughs> Yes, uh, we need to we need to have a, a new framework okay. you know, in politics. You know, we need to move away uh, from the circle in which we are in, which is completely dead. If we, if we go in this paradigm, we are not going to make any progress. So, a new paradigm shift, you know, is what is actually required. And a new set of, you know, uh, youths, you know, with proper orientation, you know, with the ideal of the of the seventies, the eighties, you know, which he talked about. You know, remember when students none. National Association of Nigerian Students, you know, we are speaking with one voice, and they joined the progressive, you know, uh, to ask for, you know, development of the country. But what we have now, we have youths that are cl clearly disoriented. You know, they, some of them into 419, some of them into, you know, get rich quick, some of them into excessive pleasure, gangsterism, yeah, gangsterism, and all man, you know, and all that. You know, they, you know, they introduce all this courtism into university. Mm -hmm. That the entire system became bastardized. That you never can now enter into a university and have maybe a situation where over sixty percent of students are, you know, progressive, you know, ideal-minded of a, an ideal society. You know, so it's a, it's a, it's a whole lot. Mm. We need to do a lot, honestly, uh, because I, I am beginning to even doubt the future of this country with the kind of ideas of the youth. Okay. You sit down, you talk with them. You so know. Your, your problem they're, they're, is not so much with the political class yes. as it is with the with, with the people with the that, youth. With the, that, that will now form the majority that can take over the, the, the system and, 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 and manage this country the way it's supposed to be managed because the, poli the elites have failed. The political elite are failed, so why will you not continue to look towards, you know, issue of salvation from the same people that have failed you? And they're not ready to make any amendment. It's for a new set of people to, you know, come up with a new idea that this is how we want our country to be. Okay. Because we have read other na how other nations, you know, we are rescued by people who sat down and said, no, we can't continue this way. They, we, we also can play our own part and all. That's the only way. And then they have one mind. They don't look at the ethnicity. They don't look at all those primordial sentiment. They will not look at them. They look at one Nigeria. Irrespective of where you come from, we must rescue this country. So this is a kind of new orientation. But I don't know how we are going to buy it because when I post something on, on the social media and I see reaction of youth and all that, I'm totally discouraged. Mm -hmm. Their idea, they are so they are so empty. They are so bereft of any ideology. You know, they don't even understand anything at all. Okay. Yeah? So that that is a, is a whole lot of problem. We have a lot to do in our hands. But God will help us in this serious advocacy we have engaged in. Yes, no, thank you very much. I mean, and, and I guess as we come to the end of this segment, uh, or we're going on a brief break, let me not wrap things up just yet, because there's more conversation to be had. I guess the hope we have is that just as you have a few you know, you have miscreants in, in any society. You have a few good men and women mm. in the midst of that. So we're still hopeful that in the midst of what we've described as sometimes dysfunctional, sometimes bereft of ideology, mm. there will still be those amongst us who have a passion for Nigeria That's and right. who want to see a better tomorrow. I think this is where I we're at. So as we continue this conversation, we're still on our special broadcast. We're going to be looking at other issues around governance. Um, and uh, we hope you'll stay tuned and continue to enjoy our discussions on this platform. So thank you, gentlemen, for this interesting conversation. It's been a pleasure engaging with you. Uh, please, yeah, I hope uh, I want to say thank you to Mr. Dele and uh, also to Mr. Monday. It's been a pleasure having you on the broadcast. Thank you, Akede. Okay. Um, if please feel free to contribute and do contribute because we love hearing from you to these conversations on any of our social media platforms. Uh, don't forget to put the hashtag Nigeria of my dreams. My time is done here. I'll be bringing in my colleague, Felicity Ezenwike, who, Ezenwike rather, who will be joining me on this uh, platform. But in the meantime, stay with us. We'll be talking more issues as we go along.